All right, uh, let's move on to our next symposium, Symposium 2 uh, of this uh, Allied Health uh, Professionals uh, Program. I hope uh, everybody who is joining us are uh, so far enjoying and I'm, hope, I'm hopeful that uh, whatever the uh, talks have so far been, been quite useful as well. Uh, so the, the topic of the symposium is Care Pathways for Clinical Presentations in Cardiac Patients. Uh, a quite useful topic and very, very important one as that. Uh, so the first lecturer uh, for this symposium, uh, may I introduce Dr. K. Ambiga, consultant cardiologist at District General Hospital, Trincomalee. Uh, she will be talking about uh, a patient who is presenting with an acute chest pain. Over to you, Ambi. Uh, good morning, I'm Dr. Ambika, consultant cardiologist from District General Hospital, Trincomalee. Uh, next 10 minutes, I'm going to discuss patient presenting with acute chest pain. Uh, what is acute chest pain? Acute chest pain is a perception of non-traumatic pain or a thoracic discomfort occurring within the preceding 24 hours. It's anatomically localized anteriorly between base of the nose and the umbilicus and posteriorly between the occipit and the 12th vertebra. It's originated from any of the organ in the chest like heart, lung or esophagus or from the component of the chest wall like skin, bone or muscle. Sometimes it originates from the nearest structures like lower bladder and stomach. Also is result as a referred pain from the neck and the shoulder joint. Acute chest pain caused by an extensive variety of disorders ranging from life-threatening syndrome like acuconal syndrome, aortic dissection, pulmonary embolism to conditions that those are relatively harmless. Those pain are described in different ways like stabbing, burning, pressure or tightness or heartburn. Is divided into two cardiac pain, non cardiac pain. Cardiac pain, we should have to be considered how they, what are the causes of cardiac pain, how they are presenting, because those are the common things we should have to attend immediately. The causes for cardiac pain, acute coronary syndrome, include ST elevation MI, non ST elevation MI, unstable angina, angina, pericarditis, myocarditis, valvular heart disease, tachyarrhythmias, acute heart failure, and hypertensive crisis. Non cardiac cause, it is happened from chest wall. Costochondritis is one of the common. Most of the time, elderly females are presented with this osteochondritis and other medical conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia. It is from esophageal gastroesophageal reflux disease, esophagitis or esophageal spasm. And this comes from lungs, pulmonary embolism, pneumonia, pleuritis or pneumothorax. Very rarely it's caused by psychological causes. When we look into epidemiology of the chest pain, about half of the patient presented with chest pain can be discharged without further hospitalization from the emergency department because the majority of the chest pain are benign condition. Majority of these patients, around 83% are discharged with non-cardiac cause of the chest pain like unspecified chest pain or non-cardiac cause like 35 percent day. Therefore, it's going to be a major challenge to identify rapidly and accurately the small group of patients who require the hospitalization and the acute management. Rest of the large group due to benign condition and can be discharged safely. Among patients admitted, only 25 percentage of the patients that comes to the diagnosis, final diagnosis of acute coronary syndrome. The rest will be non-schemic cardiac problem, non-cardiac problem or unspecified pain. Around less than 3% is very minority of the patients are coming with a life-turning condition like aortic dissection or pulmonary embolism. The characteristic of ischemic cardiac pain, major, most of the time they are not coming with a pain. Most of them they are telling at the chest discomfort. Describes like squeezing, tightness, pressure, constriction, burning, heartburn, fullness of the chest, band-like sensation. And sometimes they are telling a heavy, heavy weight on the chest. The triage of the chest pain patient is based on careful history taking, physical examination, recording and interpretation of the 12 lead ECG within 10 minutes of arrival and measurement of cardiac biomarkers. The first priority is to identify the patient who need urgent transfer to catheterization lab for immediate PCI. Those patients are ST elevation MI with less than two hours from the onset of symptoms or first medical contact. And other than ST elevation MI, ST elevation MI, there are patients with non-ST elevation MI who also require urgent catheterization like hemodynamically instability or cardiogenic shock, recurrent ongoing symptoms, refractory treatment, life-threatening arrhythmia, cardiac arrest, and acute heart failure. We are limited. We don't have 
plenty of catheterization facilities in Sri Lanka. That's why we should have to consider to recognize the patient who require fibrolytic therapy. That is also important should be attended as early as possible. And fibrotic therapy is recommended within 12 hours of the onset of symptoms if there is no contraindication. To avoid unnecessary early discharge from the emergency department, we should have to be keep those patients and observe the patients in the emergency department or in the ward for some prolonged period to do some serial ECGs and serial cardiac biomarkers to ruling or rule out the acute coronary syndrome. The first investigation we should do is an ECG. Toilet ECG should be taken within 10 minutes of the arrival or at the time of patient presentation. It is an important investigation for decision making for the further management plan. Only a small number of patients with acute chest pain shows typical ST elevation in the ECG. The rest of the patients, the majority have completely normal ECG or non-specific ECG changes. Among those patients, the incidence of myocardial infarction is low but not zero. Therefore, we should have to be keep on eye and we should have to be do the repeat ECG after 10 minutes if the previous ECG is normal or non-diagnostic if the patient is having ongoing chest pain. This, this our next two points are important for the cardiographers. They should have to be do the additional leads of ECGs like posterior chest wall ECG V4 to V7 to V9 to rule out the posterior myocardial infarction. At the same time, they should have to arrange to do the V3R, V4R, right ventricular leads to rule out the right ventricular infarction in patient presented with inferior myocardial infarction. Cardiac biomarkers, high sensitivity troponin is one of the important investigation allow the precise quantification of the cardiac muscle injury. Therefore, this should be interpreted as a quantitative fashion. We can't tell as positive or negative. We should have to be tell regarding the quantitative way, like the particular figure. High, high level of high sensitive troponin level, the likelihood of presence of myocardial infarction is high. And MI should be ruled out if the high sensitive troponin level on admission and three hours after the first sampling, if both should be negative or within normal way, we can rule out the myocardial infarction with additional requirement like patient should be pain free and there's a low risk for hospital mortality. If the patient presented with more than six hours from the onset of symptoms, then we one, sing, one single sample of troponin should be we can take as uh, enough um, evident for the diagnostic ruling or rule out of the acute coronary syndrome. Uh, other important thing is troponin is an organ specific, it comes from the heart, it's not a disease specific. Then therefore many other non-cardiac disorders other than acute coronary syndrome and non-cardiac diseases with involvement of the heart also can cause elevated high level of troponin. Transthoracic echocardiography, this is not Indicated for all the patients is indicated whoever come with a chest pain that is suspicious of cardiac origin, diagnosis or high clinical suspicious of acute coronary syndrome, hemodynamic instability, acute heart failure, suspicious of aortic dissection, myocarditis or pericarditis. It is not required where the non-cardiac diagnosis of acute chest pain is suspected. Chest x where there is a high clinical suspicions of acute life-threatening conditions like pneumothorax, pneumonia, acute aortic dissection. In those patients, we should have to arrange a chest X-ray within 30 minutes from the admission. Then CT computer tomography, computer CT scan plays an important role to rule out and help in the darkness so majority of the life-threatening condition. CT coronary angiogram has been proposed as a rapid and accurate diagnostic technique to rule out obstructive coronary artery disease if the patient is come with acute chest pain. is uh, easy to rule out the acute cardiac causes and we can discharge the patient but is not freely available in our setup. CT autogram also one of the important investigation to rule out the acute aortic dissection and the diagnosis of acute aortic dissection we should have to consider for the CT autogram if the patient is come with a chest pain with highly suspicious of acute aortic dissection. CT pulmonary angiogram 
allows the detection of pulmonary embolism and visualization of the pulmonary arteries up to the segmental level then is easy to rule out the pulmonary embolism if it is negative it should be the first line investigation if highly suspicious of pulmonary embolism ultrasonography is not helpful in the cardiac patients but is only helpful in patient who are can be the non cardiac cause of chest pain like the pleural effusion pneumothorax and if there's a such patients coming with the chest pain most suspicious is comes from gastrointestinal causes like cholecystitis biliary colic or pancreatitis in summary is anyone's come with the emergency department with the acute chest pain the careful evaluation of the symptom and risk assessment should be done in all patient presented with chest pain to initiate specific therapy when indicated to reduce avoidable admission and avoid inappropriate discharges that should be the main aim for us to um, um, treat the patient and early diagnosis and that will be the good outcome for, for the patient as well as for us as a treating team thank you uh, thank you very much dr ambiga for that uh, very comprehensive lecture on um, a patient coming with acute chest pain um, uh, let me in, in, uh, allow dr sandamali to introduce our next lecturer uh, thank